Great Coasters International is one of the best wood coaster manufacturers out there. This company's coasters are known for their twisted layouts, airtime pops, and great pacing. And this company's portfolio could look a lot different in a few years with the creation of their Weld Free Steel Titan track. So before this happens, I want to rank my top 20 roller coasters from GCI. Before starting the countdown, I have a few things to note. First, I have not ridden any of the GCIs in Asia. Some of the best ones appear to be in China. Wood Coaster at Night Valley in particular looks incredible with its long layout on that wooded hillside. I would love to ride these ones someday. Second, I have not been on Wicker Man at Alton Towers. I saw it under construction back in 2017, but I need to get back there to try it out. Third, I did not get to experience the original Gwazi or Ozark Wildcat before the removal. Four, I know GCI performed a complete retrack and some profiling adjustments to Knott's Berry Farms Ghost Rider, but I still consider that coaster a CCI because they made the original layout. Had I counted this coaster, it would have claimed the top spot. Fifth, I already have reviews for many of these coasters, including everything in the top 10. Now let's dig into the list. I have been on 21 GCIs, so which one failed to make the cut? None other than the original one in Hershey Park's Wildcat. I really liked this ride with the old PTC trains. It ran rougher, but it had some very powerful airtime towards the front. The Millennium Flyers that were added in 2007 made the ride more comfortable, but it still had a shake and the airtime was significantly weakened, so I'm not too surprised that ride was closed, and it's currently in the process of being transformed into an RMC. Number 20. Roar at Six Flags America it's not too surprising some of the roughest GCIs all started with PTC trains. These trains are not the most ideal for twister layouts. While all the others eventually got Millennium Flyers, Roar has always had the original trains. This ride is very shaky on wheel seats, especially as you move further back in the train. Not only that, the forces are not all that great back there either, but if you get a front row ride, this coaster is not only tolerable, but it has some solid pops of airtime. Number 19, Heidi the Ride at Plopsaland de Pan. This is a near clone of another coaster you'll see later on this list. While this coaster was running quite smoothly for me in 2021, it just did not have the airtime I expect from a GCI. Maybe it was due to the weather being in the 60s, but I only got some tiny pops of airtime. This one did have a fun dark ride scene heading back to the station at least, so it ends on a positive note. It is also worth knowing I have not been on Wielka Walk in Poland. This is a mirror image of Heidi. Number 18, Thunderbird of Powerland. This is a near clone of American Thunder, but it does not run nearly as well as its US counterpart. You get some decent airtime going into and out of the turnarounds, but the Bunny Hills oddly did not offer much airtime. And that's a bummer because there are a lot of them. It was very smooth minus the pullout from the first drop at least. Maybe this is another one that was impacted by cooler weather. Number 17, Roar at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This was nearly identical to the one at Six Flags America, except the West Coast version opened with Millennium Flyer trains. It was still bumpy by the end of its life, but the cushioning made the experience tolerable in any row, and the train navigated the course better, so the pacing and negative Gs were superior to. Number 16, Kentucky Rumbler at Beach Bend. This coaster starts off strong. It has good airtime into the turnarounds, but the ride fades towards the end. There's this big hill over the queue line that hurts the speed, power, and pacing. The ride never gets rough at least. Number 15, El Toro at Fryzai Park Plon. This has a pretty unique layout. The start interacts with the log flume. The first drop is some nice floater, and there are some snappy directional changes. The rest of the ride travels up and down a small hill. This coaster is nearly a half dozen airtime moments, but it was on the weaker side. Then this is another coaster that dies out towards the end, but I liked everything up to that point. Number 14, Apocalypse at Six Flags Magic Mountain. The track work a few years ago saved this from missing the list entirely. While this isn't airtime centric as the other coasters in this list, it still gets you out of your seat a few times. Where this ride really excels is in the speed department. You move through the layout at a great clip. Number 13, American Thunder at Six Flags St. Louis. I last rode this coaster in 2020 when it was running notoriously slower according to everyone. Even in that state, 
I still liked it better than Thunderbird. Every hill offered airtime. It was just on the weaker side compared to other GCIs. I have heard this one is running faster once again, so it has potential to move up a few spots when I re-ride it. Number 12. Lightning Racer at Hershey Park I got my best rides on this coaster in 2022. While it has a bit of a rattle now after two decades of operation, the airtime was more pronounced than past years. It still cannot match the rides in the top 10 in that department, but it has some solid pops. Most importantly, you have the racing element. It gets your competitive juices flowing, and it creates some fun near misses and visuals along the course. Number 11. Prowler at Worlds of Fun This ride has a great setting. It is tucked back there and surrounded by trees. This layout is mostly an out and back coaster, but it has some agile changes of direction to keep you on your toes. There are several bunny hills, but the airtime wasn't quite as punchy as the GCIs higher up on this list. This coaster does hold its speed well, but it can get a bit shaky at points. Now I've always heard this is a legendary night ride, but I've only gotten to experience it by day so far. Number 10. Invader at Busch Gardens Williamsburg Size doesn't always matter. Invader proves that. The stats look more like a family coaster, but this packs a punch on the ends of the trains. The first drop is good airtime in the back, then the hills of sharp crests so there's no shortage of airtime in the rest of the turnarounds and bunny hills. And this ride is particularly good at night because it's quite a ways back from the midway. Number 9. White Lightning at Fun Spot Orlando Maybe it's because of the Florida heat and humidity, but this ride has way more power than the aforementioned Heidi. This is one of the smaller GCIs based off size and length, but it has negative Gs that can compete with the larger coasters on this list. I love the airtime and laterals on the first drop in the back, and the bunny hills on the return run are another highlight. Some parts were running shaky a few years ago, but it was running very well last year. Number 8. Texas Stingray at SeaWorld San Antonio This ride does several things well. It is very smooth, it has a nice layout, and it holds its speed start to finish. The first half has some sweet airtime, particularly in the first drop in the back. The return run didn't have the airtime I expected, but I believe the coast was running slow considering it was in the 50s of the day I visited. Had those hills delivered, this ride had a chance to place in the top 5. Number 7. Jorison the Drock at Efteling This ride takes the racing element I love from Lightning Racer, and adds the more forceful airtime pops I've come to expect from GCI. The first three quarters is a beautiful blitz of bunny hills, all of which shoot you into the air. The finale is pretty weak though, but I love everything else. Now I thought the ride was running very smoothly back in 2021, and it recently got tightened track, so it should be running even better. Number 6. Thunderhead at Dollywood This ride once won the Golden Ticket Award for the Best Wood Coaster. While it may never have been worthy of that title in my opinion, it is still a great ride. The retracking over the past few years has it in good condition. Then the Twister layout has good pacing, and some nice airtime, particularly entering and exiting any turnaround. Number 5. Troy at Toverland I finally got the great rides everyone described in 2022, but it was worth noting it took a 100 degree day to do so. The train was hauling through the layout. I got airtime in spots I hadn't gotten it before. The turnarounds and dips offered quick pops of airtime, and then there were some small bunny hills with more sustained floater airtime. Then almost all the turns and directional changes offered laterals, sometimes sustained, and other times more rapid jolts. It's not as smooth as the other four coasters ahead of it, but the cushiony trains make it plenty tolerable for me. Number 4. Renegade at Valley Fair I love this coaster's layout. The first half has some large turnarounds with strong jolts of airtime. Then you have these smaller hills with sustained floater, much like Troy. The second half finishes things off with some more brief, but satisfying negative Gs. This one has really good pacing, and the isolated setting makes it especially wonderful at night. There are two slight downsides with this coaster though. One, it has developed a bit of a shimmy. Two, this one has retractable seatbelts, unlike all the other coasters in this list, and that can limit how much airtime you get. Number 3. Gold Striker of California's Great America I am so glad this coaster got a big retrack because it was running very well in 2022. It has a strong case as the most intense GCI. The ride has a lot of positive Gs for a wood coaster on the turns and valleys. 
Gold Striker rips through the layout. It's fast on its own, and the speed is augmented by the tunnels and supports you whiz past. And you of course have a bevy of airtime pops, not quite as strong as the two coasters ahead of it, but when paired with everything else, this is a very complete ride. Number 2. Vodon Timber Coaster at Europa Park This is another ride that benefited mightily from a retrack. I liked this ride back in 2017. Great layout, but it was rough. In 2021, this ride was running smoothly, so it shot up my rankings. You have my favorite drop on GCI. It is noticeably taller than the other coasters and offers great sustained floater and back. Then you carry all your speed through the layout. This ride is a masterclass in pacing between the near misses and rapid fire elements. It is one airtime hill after another. Some sustain the negative G's, others offer more abrupt pops, and there's even some theming in the queue line as well that's an added bonus. And coming in at number one is Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. This coaster feels like Prowler, both in terms of setting and layout, except this one is significantly smoother and has way more power. Despite having an out and back layout, the way the hills dash side to side makes the course feel more complete. The sustained speed is wonderful, especially with all those trees, and every hill will shoot you out of your seat. This ride is especially magical at night, it is very dark back there. Then you have the shed at the end. It's quirky, but it always puts a smile on my face. So those are my top 20 roller coasters from GCI. This list has the ability to fluctuate more than most because these placements are contingent upon how well the ride is being maintained and possibly the temperature. But this is the snapshot as of the end of the 2022 season. Which ones are your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you consider subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.